Hey everyone, here's a project that I uh, built a while back that resurfaced recently. This is a liquid level controller that I originally built for my aquarium. So let me show you how it works. Uh, the probe is here and when the probe is in water uh, you can see the status light has gone off over here. And as soon as the probe is removed from water the light comes back on. And so the idea is that you can plug a water pump into this uh, electrical outlet and when the light is on the pump will be running so it'll pump water into the aquarium and when the uh, level gets high enough it shuts the pump off. So this is handy because aquariums evaporate a lot of water uh, surprisingly uh, a high amount so for reef aquariums that have high intensity lighting it can be a cup or two per day so this is actually a really nice time saver. So as you can see this part of it at the bottom here is a commercially available unit and I got this one surplus at Halted uh, but later I needed more of these and got them on eBay for fairly cheap. In fact, I've got a whole brick of them, but I'll talk about these in a minute. This is a Keyence FSV11, and it's got this little thing here. There's the nameplate. And the idea is that this thing generates a light signal and sends the light out via a plastic fiber optic, and then the light returns via another plastic fiber optic, and this thing measures how much light comes back. So when the probe is in water, uh, a low amount of light is coming back, and when the probe is out of water, uh, much more light comes back. And then this thing uses the difference to decide whether to throw a switch or not. What's pretty cool is that the, the little controller here is very configurable. So I can use these up-down keys to set what my threshold is going to be. I can dial this thing up and down. I think it has a resolution of 0 to about 4,000. And so when the probe is in the water, you can see we're getting an, an arbitrary value of like 70 back or 65 and when it's in air we're getting 650. So we could set the threshold anywhere between those values and get it to work. And then this thing has a whole bunch of other modes too. Um, you can set, it can output like a pulse or something and you can check whether the, re, uh, the output switch should be on when there's a lot of light coming back or vice versa when there's not a lot of light. And it gets fairly complicated. Uh, one thing that this thing does which is pretty nifty is it it actually outputs a pulse of light and then measures the return and then subtracts the return from when, and when the pulse is not on. So it's sort of a differential sensor. Uh, if this thing just outputs steady, steady light and then measured the return value, if I waved this around near a light source, the, the value would be going up and down. Uh, it's changing a little bit now because if you bend these fibers, you'll get a, a difference in the return. Uh, but the susceptibility to a, uh, ambient light would be much worse if it didn't pulse the output and then do a differential reading just so that it's only seeing the light from its output pulse. The sensor itself is made of a piece of acrylic that I turned on the lathe and I just cut a, a 45 degree half angle so the total thing is 90 here and then drilled some holes farther up where I could push the plastic fibers into this sort of a conical prism almost. So the light comes out of one fiber, you can almost see it, see it coming out there and reflects internally to the other face of the cone and then back out this receiving fiber. So when this is dunked in water or almost any liquid, the light uh, scatters off into the, into the liquid. When it's in air, the light is reflected due to total internal reflection. So this sensor uh, makes use of the fact that the, that the properties at the surface between the plastic and the water change um, optically because of the index of refraction there. So it's a very robust sensor. It's actually hard to fool this because uh, it's, it's sort of sensing in this entire area of the cone here. So the, the level that the water has to come up to to make the light diminish to the threshold value is very repeatable. And there's no moving parts in here and this thing is essentially sealed. So there's, it's, it's a very uh, high quality robust sensor. You might notice a little bit of crud here. This was installed in my aquarium and so there's a lot of calcium deposits and sort of dead algae on there. Surprisingly that doesn't even affect the sensor very much because the algae and the uh, calcium deposits don't cause the light to be scattered away like the water. So it doesn't cause the sensor to be sensitive to false positives. So this type of fiber optic has a one millimeter diameter acrylic core. It's PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate. And then it has a jacket on the outside that's some other kind of plastic but it's very easy to snip this with a pair of scissors and then polish the end using sandpaper. Um, you can buy this type of fiber optic at you know Edmund uh, Scientific or a lot of the suppliers like that but you can also buy the cheap 
Toslink audio cables on eBay. You can get really long cables for, for very, very cheap. And if you cut one of those Toslink cables up, you'll find that there's a much fatter uh, outer rubber jacket, and then inside it's basically the same as, as the stuff that I've got here. At this point, it's kind of the same thing. And um, for the money, I mean, you really can't beat it. This is, this is what the, the Toslink end looks like. And if you just chop that off, that's what you've got inside. I don't know if these are still available on eBay, but um, for a while, these were fairly cheap on there, too. And what you do is you just open this thing up and push the fibers into here and then clamp it shut and set your threshold. And you do all kinds of interesting sensing with these. So, for example, you can have the two fibers aiming out in the same direction. And then if you've got like a, uh, an automated production line or something like that, uh, and you want to sense whether an object is going by you on the conveyor belt, when the reflection hits the receiver fiber, you can have this trigger something. If you do want to prep the end of one of these fibers, one thing that helps a lot, you can just cut it with a pair of scissors. And then if you make a polishing puck like this, what you can do is put the, the fiber through the polishing puck so that it's coming out the other end just slightly and then put that down onto a piece of sandpaper and with water uh, move the puck around like this to polish the end of the fiber and the puck will make sure that the fiber stays perpendicular to the surface of the sandpaper and you can use just standard wet dry sandpaper probably start with something fairly coarse like 320 because when you cut this with a scissor you'll have a very rough edge and then work your way all the way up to 1500 or even 600 it, these things are not super high optical quality. Uh, the fact that the fiber is a whole millimeter in diameter uh, means that you don't have to get it terribly good. You can kind of see when I aim the fiber up at the fluorescent light on the ceiling, you can kind of see it coming out the end there. These Keyence devices have an open collector output. So what I did is I wired this up with a solid state relay and the relay just triggers this electrical outlet here. And inside here, there's a low voltage power supply. These things will run on 12 to 24 volts DC. And the uh, solid state relay can accept 3 to 30 volts on its input side. So there's really very little circuitry inside there. There's just an AC power cord and then the uh, fiber optics. All right, hope that was helpful. See you next time. Bye.